The black granite bust in front of me is located in Hall 24 on the first floor of the Cairo Museum. After visiting 50% of the exhibition halls on the first floor, most tourists will rush to the second floor to admire the more dazzling exhibits such as Tutankhamun's treasures, thus missing one of the most important figures in the late Egyptian dynasty, which is Mentuemhat. Born into a great family in Thebes, Mentuemhat's father served as the mayor of Thebes and the third prophet at the Temple of Amun. Mentuemhat lived up to his origins, and his achievements and influence in his life far exceeded his father's. He holds many honorable titles such as the fourth prophet of Amun, mayor of Thebes, governor of Upper Egypt, builder of the Temple of Thebes, hereditary chief, royal sealer, scribe of the Temple of Amun, and oracle interpreters, etc. He was one of the wealthiest and most powerful figures in the 25th and 26th dynasties of Egypt. This bust is from the Temple of Mut in the Karnak complex, with two standing statues behind it, excavated in the Keshet of Karnak. On the right is Mentuemhat himself, on the left is his son Naiskansu. Behind this group of statues is the family tomb of Mentuemhat on the west bank of Luxor. Of the many monuments he erected during his lifetime, none is more impressive than this tomb. It is one of the largest and most ornately decorated private tomb monuments ever built in ancient Egypt. The first time I saw this picture in a book, I was attracted by the novel and elegant giant relief sculpture of this tomb and decided to visit and appreciate it in person. The tomb was built in the 7th century BC and is located on one of the most prestigious plots of the Thebes necropolis on the west bank of the Nile. It is the limestone terrace east of Deir Bahiri now known as Us Asif during the open festival. Amun's holy barges are lined up from there to enter the solemn funeral temple of the female pharaoh Hatshepsut. The entrance to the tomb on this plot was right on the parade route, so it was favored by the nobles of the time. Us Asif is located at the southern end of the parking lot of the temple of Hatshepsut. It is numbered TT-34 and is currently closed to the public due to the excavation of the tomb has not yet been completed. This time, with the help of local friends, I was able to visit the sunken courtyards of the tomb from above. Although I couldn't enter the inside of the tomb, I was very satisfied to be able to see its true face from the ground down. On the east side of the tomb is a huge pylon made of mud brick. Behind the pylon are the remains of a huge underground building. It features two large sunken courtyards and more than 50 well-planned rooms. The entire tomb building was cut directly from the limestone bedrock. All spaces have been meticulously planned, with scenes of sacrifices displayed on the walls of the rooms. The walls of the inner chamber of the tomb are decorated with the contents of the Book of the Dead. The walls of the sunken open-air courtyard are embellished with the tomb's iconic giant papyrus flower relief. From the remaining color on the corner of the petals, we know that they once had bright colors. Although the colors have faded, the Egyptian limestone and relief designs still make them look very pleasing to the eye, giving a sense of serenity that is beyond question. Regrettably, the reliefs in most of the rooms inside the tomb have been damaged to varying degrees. As early as the end of the 19th century, antique dealers had already started looting the stone carvings on the walls of the tomb chambers. These raids intensified during World War I and World War II. Ultimately, hundreds of exquisite relief fragments ended up in public and private collections in Europe, the United States, and Japan. Excavations of the tomb began in 1941, but a series of political events brought the excavation to a near standstill. In 1988, with the help of a gang of tomb robbers, archaeologists finally made some progress. Firstly, the tomb robbers found the tomb of Nespita the son of Mentuemhat, at the bottom of a deep, dark shaft. For lighting, the tomb robbers unwisely set Nespita's wooden coffin on fire. As a result, the smoke from the wood burning exposed their criminality, attracting the police. Subsequently, archaeologists cleaned and excavated Nespita's exquisite sarcophagus. Nespita wore a wig common in the 22nd dynasty. The long wig extended to the shoulders but did not reveal the ears. Mentuemhat's own sarcophagus is still missing. Given the sheer size of the monument, the cleaning up of the tomb and the restoration of the burial reliefs in the tomb chambers are very daunting tasks. Currently, the only part of the tomb that has been completely cleared is the first courtyard. It is likely that it will not be open to the public for a long time to come. But nonetheless, it is still one of the most impressive tombs to me. Both in terms of artistic innovation and the size of the tomb, the tomb of Mentuemhat can be regarded as one of the finest tombs of the ancient Egyptian era. The construction of Mentuemhat's tomb, which spanned the 25th and 26th dynasties, 
not only has the decorative characteristics of the tombs of the two dynasties but can also be regarded as a fruit of Egyptian revivalism. During the late kingdoms, the nobility arose a craze for retro-Egyptian art. Instead of simply copying the earlier works of art, they adopted eclecticism, optimized fusion, and even innovated while absorbing the characteristics of the 18th dynasty of the New Kingdom and the art of the Old Kingdom. For example, in the relief design on the lintel of the central porch of the first courtyard, in addition to the images of Mentuemhat and his son, the mummy image and the cartouche of the pharaoh Pusamadik I, who founded the 26th dynasty, also appear on the lintel with the gods. Based on what we know so far, this is the first non-royal tomb to feature a pharaoh. And this detail alludes to the political reality of the time and the status of the owner of the tomb. Clearly, Mentuemhat was a powerful and influential figure in ancient Egypt if he was able to carve out such a substantial resting place for himself in the necropolis of the pharaohs. Yet you won't find him on any Egyptian king lists. Mentuemhat was mayor of Thebes from around 660 to 648 BC and was also the de facto ruler of Upper Egypt. The serene beauty of his tomb stands in stark contrast to the violent political turmoil of the era. But it seems that no matter how the regime changes, Mentuemhat could always deal with it calmly and place himself in a position to effectively rule Upper Egypt by relying on his political agility. Mentuemhat's political career began in the 25th dynasty established by the Nubians, probably thanks to his own Nubian blood and marriage to the granddaughter of the Nubian king Pia. Mentuemhat had actual control over most of Upper Egypt's territory, centered on Thebes. Although the Assyrian invasion ended the 25th dynasty, the status and power of Mentuemhat was not weakened. He was entrusted by the Assyrians with his knowledge of local affairs. During the eight years that the Assyrians occupied Egypt, Mentuemhat was not only the most powerful official in Upper Egypt, but also the de facto ruler. He presided over the rebuilding of Thebes, while overseeing works on the Karnak Temple on the east bank of the Nile and the Necropolis Project on the west bank of the Nile. In the extraordinary career of Mentuemhat, few events were more historic than Thebes' recognition of the suzerainty of the 26th dynasty. Samtik I expelled the short-lived Assyrian rule and founded the 26th dynasty in the Nile Delta region. The reunification of Upper and Lower Egypt was put on the agenda. In order to avoid civil war, Mentuemhat proposed peace talks and recognized the 26th dynasty's rule over Upper Egypt. Ultimately, Mentuemhat reconnected the populace of Upper and Lower Egypt by adopting the daughter of Pusamadik I, while retaining much of his power in Upper Egypt. This is perhaps why the image of Semitic I appears in the tomb of Mentuemhat, who wishes to emphasize his personal allegiance to Pusamadik I and his contribution to the great cause of the reunification of Upper and Lower Egypt. In return, his contribution to the reunification of Egypt was also appreciated by Pusamadik I. Today we can still see such glorious titles as the Eyes of the King in All the Land, Prince of the Deserts and Keeper of the Gate of the Deserts given to him by Pusamadik I from the inscriptions within his tomb. Lastly, I would like to share with you a finding of my research. After watching my previous introduction, you must be as attracted by the huge papyrus flower relief on the wall of the open-air courtyard as I am. Let's take a look at the description of this courtyard relief in the exhibition hall of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Yes, that's right, it says Lotus. The American Research Center in Egypt believes the wall reliefs depict papyrus flowers. So is it a lotus flower or a papyrus flower? In traditional concepts, the papyrus is the symbol of Lower Egypt, while the lotus is the symbol of Upper Egypt. Mentuemhat was the governor of Upper Egypt, and the tomb is located in Upper Egypt, so there seems to be no problem defining the relief here as a lotus. Especially after reading the description of the museum, it becomes more convincing. But when we zoomed in on the relief picture, we could see that it was more of a papyrus flower than a lotus flower. In fact, what makes us misjudge is the flower sepals. In the vast majority of ancient Egyptian papyrus flower reliefs or frescoes, we rarely see such exaggerated depictions of receptacles that most people here will see the flower sepals as the petals of a lotus at first glance. However, after carefully distinguishing the characteristics of the two flowers, we will clearly come to the correct answer. I guess the purpose to have such a huge papyrus flower relief is to let future generations remember his contribution to the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt, and Lower Egypt's recognition of his authority. Do you think my conclusion is correct?